So my name is Florine. I'm enrolled in a civil engineering program at the APFL and I'm currently in my third year out of this four-year program. I think a PhD gives you the possibility not only to acquire knowledge, which you do a lot, but also to contribute in one sense or in another to expanding the knowledge pool. And that's something which I find extremely interesting and also very rewarding. I was considering different schools. I mean, two schools I already know quite well at the point were ETH and, and MIT. And I mean, these are of course among the very best schools that you have. And I, I think I would probably have had an opportunity to continue there if I had stayed on my classical track, so either mechanical or chemical engineering. But as I said, I really wanted to explore a new field, a new field where human behavior, but also the modeling that I did before somehow come together. And I felt that APFL was one of the very few places that would allow me to do that. One of the centers that I'm affiliated with is the transportation center. And so through this transportation center, we can directly interact with partners from industry. In my specific case, it is the Swiss Federal Railways. And that's really a unique opportunity to do high level research and at the same time understand what is going on in practice, exchange with practitioners, expertise, but also data. And that's something which I think is really a strong point of APFL. So whenever I tell a friend of mine that I'm working on modeling pedestrian flows in a railway station, they tell me, oh wow, finding somebody who is working on that. And so I think it's quite obvious to everyone that pedestrian flows in railway stations are becoming more and more of a problem. If you want to describe demand, so the number of people going from A to B, over time, then you're quickly looking at thousands, if not millions of variables that you need to estimate. So mathematically, this is certainly difficult. But right now, what I find most difficult is to really understand practical sides, the practical side of a railway station. So how can I make the right assumptions about what's happening in a railway station. For instance, how quickly can people get off a, a train and, and which exit do they choose once they've gotten off, once, once, once they've disembarked from, from a train. I can work with people from, from different cultures, from different countries, with people that have a different background. I work with sociologists, I work with mathematicians, engineers, and maybe even psychologists. And I also work with people that have some, some drive. They really like what they do and they are really 100% invested. So now I have one and a half years to go in my PhD. And starting this summer, I will have the opportunity to do a six months exchange in Hong Kong and to work there on, on local pedestrian problems together with local researchers. And I think this will be very fascinating. It will be very fascinating because in many ways, the situation we have today in Asia is what we would expect to, to happen in Europe in a few years or maybe decades from now. So the level of congestion they have, the amount of people that they have to move through the city is really enormous. And I think by studying these processes in Asia, we can learn a lot about how we should do, how we should do things here back in Europe.